Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Al. And welcome to my stop in the March 2024 Oso oh Inspired Collaboration Hop. If you're new to my channel or this series, it is a monthly collaboration that I host here on YouTube and myself and a team of collaborators take the same inspiration piece and create something new based upon it. This is just to show you that no matter your style, your skill level, your craft, that we can all be inspired by each other. As you hop along today, which I'll tell you how to do that here in just a little bit, you're going to see how the same inspiration piece has inspired us to create widely different projects. It's always one of my most favorite things to see as I hop along myself. This month, we are being inspired by Terry Walker, who is at Nuts About Stamping over on Instagram. Up on screen now is a look at the card that we chose, and down in the description box is a link to the blog post about it. Make sure to stop by, leave Terry some love, and thank her for letting us use her piece this month. My main takeaway from her card and what I'll be inspired by today is how she has used some scrappy strips and created that fun pattern on her card front. I'm going to be going a little bit of a different route and I'm going to be using a pre-printed card map from Tailored Expressions to create my pattern. I pre-chose one and this is the one you'll see me use today. It kind of reminds me of a wooden floor. For my scraps, I just got out a paper pad I bought at Michael's and it has some fun watercolor backgrounds, but you can see there, it also has some fun silver metallics. As I get into the process, I'll tell you about the other products and tools that I use, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I'm going to add adhesive to that pre-printed card map using a TE sticky sheet. Now you can definitely use other types of adhesives like a tape runner or liquid glue. I just decided to do this today. I always start by peeling back one corner of one side of the release paper, line that up with the card map, and then pull the rest of that release paper and just let it fall on to the pre-printed piece. Once that's in place, I start to peel back the other side of the release paper, and this time I just do a little corner or about halfway down the sheet, just so I do have something to hold on to with my fingers instead of them getting stuck to the card map. Now I'm going to start adding the strips, and I laid them out in the order I want them to go on the card. In case you were curious, these paper scraps came from the Ink Splatter Recollections paper pad. I cut my scraps to one half inch by five inches, and you could definitely use a die for this, but I just used a paper trimmer. I started by placing one of the red pattern paper pieces into a marked area on the card front. This first one you'll want to get as straight with those lines as possible, and later we'll cut that excess off the back. Now for the next piece, I kind of had to go backward in my color combo with how I started. So I grabbed the darker blue and then I butted that straight end right up against the previous red one. Then you're just going to keep adding those strips in the order, making sure to line it up with the previous pieces. Now it might not line up exactly to the pre-printed guide, but that's okay as long as you line them up on your own. While I finish putting the scrappy strips in place, I thought it would be a great time to tell you more about the Oh So Inspired Collaboration Hop. Like I mentioned earlier, myself and my collaboration team are sharing projects today based upon the same inspiration piece. To see what everyone else has created, there is a playlist down in the description box below. It's going to be your one-stop shop to see all of our videos. If you would rather search out the videos yourself channel by channel, everybody is also linked down in that description box. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see what they were inspired to create, and leave them some love. 
As you're hopping along, if you notice that you're not subscribed to some of the collaboration team members' channels, I do hope that you will consider clicking on that subscribe button. As always, it's free, it's quick, it's easy, and they have so many more videos that you can go and watch their creations and get inspired by them. While it is not a requirement to subscribe, it definitely is appreciated. You might have noticed that to finish up some of those smaller sections, I did snip off the ends of the previous strips I had placed. And here's a look at that completely finished. I just love all that sparkle and shine from the metallic foiling. Now I did overcut strips earlier, so I probably could get at least one more card front from those. And speaking of overcut, the next thing I did was bring in my non-stick scissors and trim off the excess. I tried to run my blade right along where the card map ended, and I did hang on to most of these little scraps in case I do decide to make another card front later. Next up, I did some die cutting for the card front. I used the largest petite scallop rectangle stacklet on a piece of silver glitter cardstock from my stash, and on the piece that we just created, I used the largest stitched rectangle stacklet. Now, while I was off camera, I did decide to make the most of the silver glitter cardstock, and I cut a rectangle out of the middle, and I can use that on a project later. I also created a pea pod top fold card base there, and now I'm going to start putting the card front together. Because this is glitter paper, and sometimes the ATG doesn't like to stick to it right away, I put ATG or tape runner around the outside back of my strippy piece or my scrappy piece, and then I also added some liquid glue. Now I have some wiggle time to get that put in place centered, and I press it nice and firm so that it holds tight to that glitter cardstock. Then I'm going to add adhesive to the back of the scallop piece and get these two layers placed onto the front center of that card base. For the sentiment, I will be stamping Hello from Tailored Expressions Get the Word Out Hello Stamp and Die Set, and I decided to stamp it onto a scrap of watermelon cardstock. I thought it went well with some of the reds on the card front. I am going to be heat embossing with some new sparkly silver embossing powder, and so the powder sticks only to where I want it. I prepped my cardstock with the anti-static powder tool, and then I inked up my stamp and stamped it twice with some Versamark embossing ink. Once that was stamped, I brought in my Sizzix tray to catch the stray embossing powder that I pulled over my stamped area. Then all I had to do was heat it up to set the powder, and because this does have glitter in it, I let the tool heat up for about 30 seconds before heating it from the back. This way I don't blow off any of the glitter. And here's a close-up look at that sparkle. Off camera, I cut my sentiment out with the coordinating die, and I also used the stitch circle stacklets, and I used the largest one to cut a circle from vellum. Also, while I was off camera, I added a piece of white cardstock to the inside of my card base and used one of the green scrappy strips on the bottom just for a little added decoration. Now it's time to get the sentiment put in place. I used vellum because I thought that would help the hello stand out from that background, which is pretty colorful and busy. Now I wanted it to look like the circle was falling off the edge of the card, so I figured out where the two pieces would go, made some marks with my fingernail on the vellum, and then brought in a trimmer and quickly cut off that edge. I had already put some foam tape on the back of the hello, so I pulled the release paper and got that put in place. Now before I put it onto the card, I do want to add a little bit more sparkle, so I brought in some shiny silver diamond dots, and I added five of those to the front of the vellum. I let that dry for a little bit, and when it had, I brought in my liquid glue, and I put adhesive behind the hello and behind each of the diamond dots. That way it will hold down the outside of that vellum a little bit better. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to visit the other creators on the hop 
using the links in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.